Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. In this video, we're going to cover the SIG 365 SAS. In late 2017, SIG announced a new pistol to be released in early 2018, the 365. This pistol was a polymer-framed micro-compact chambered in 9mm that measures just 5.8 inches long, 4.3 inches high, and 1 inch wide, and it came standard with SIG's night sights. However, none of that was really groundbreaking. There were a lot of similar sized 9mm pistols on the market at the time. What was groundbreaking was the fact that it held 10 plus 1 rounds in its flush fitted magazine, and an extended magazine, which only added 3 eighths of an inch to that length, held 12 plus 1. This brought high capacity levels to a micro sized pistol, and that was something new. You now did not have to make the choice between size and capacity. Well, they've proven that they can still innovate and have just released a version that brings something totally new to the market again, the 365 SAS. Small defensive carry pistols are by nature meant to be concealed and while doing so can possibly snag on clothing or concealed carry holsters, something that could be catastrophic if you need your firearm immediately. The 365 SAS, short for SIG Anti-Snag, does away with everything that can typically snag. They flush fitted the slide lock, the takedown lever, and they even removed the sights. That in and of itself is not really innovative, as other concealed carry pistols have went the route of practically non-existent sights and trimmed levers. What sets the 365 apart is that SIG developed the pistol to still include a complete sighting system, utilizing Mipro Lite's LT Bullseye sighting system by building it into the slide itself. In operation, it's meant to function much like a red dot. You essentially put the dot on the target and pull the trigger. The LT Bullseye system gathers ambient light via its fiber optics to create a bright, visible target dot, and it also includes a tritium illuminator for use in no light situations. And with no front sight to contend with, SIG also decided to provide a ported barrel and slide to help control muzzle flip. Let's take a closer look. And of course, before working on any firearm, we want to make sure it is free and clear of any ammunition. So we'll go ahead and remove the magazine. The magazine is free and clear. Lock the slide back. You can see down in the chamber, it is free and clear as well. So we are free to start looking at the controls and features of the 365. The 365 is a striker fired single action only pistol. So the trigger only serves to release the striker assembly to fire the weapon. And we have our magazine release here. It operates in typical fashion. You would push in on that and that would release the magazine. It can be flipped around to the other side to allow for it set up to be a, for a left hand use. It has a front rail assembly for uh, optional, uh, they make a, a light assembly for it. Uh, there's also a couple, com a couple companies out there that make a sight or a laser sight and flashlight assembly. So you basically you can put a lighter laser on it. Uh, keep in mind this particular model, the SAS, was designed to be snag free. So I don't know if you'd want to go putting a whole bunch of stuff on the front of it. It kind of defeats the purpose of having this particular version. However, it still has the rail if you're inclined to do so. This is our slide lock. And there is the shelf on the magazine there, which will push internally so that when the last round is fired, it will lift that up to lock the slide back. Now, as this is the SAS version, they've essentially removed the lever that would protrude from the side of the firearm. So it's very difficult to operate that manually. So for the most part, you'd want to just use the slingshot, slingshot approach, which you just pull the slide back slightly to release it because that would then release the, the lock. This is the takedown lever. And in this case, there again, being the SAS version, they've removed the external lever assembly. So it's more like a, almost like a takedown screw, but it doesn't unscrew all the way. You would need a tool of some type now to be able to rotate that to unlock the pistol for disassembly. We have the Mipro Lite Bullseye LT side assembly that goes on the, the top. That is the one of the hallmark features of this particular uh, firearm. There is no adjustment for this, so it basically should come aligned from the factory. There is no adjustment you can make to correct it. There has been reports that uh, this sight might not be aligned correctly for every firearm. So it seems to be kind of luck of the draw. 
Uh, in this particular case, uh, they don't appear to be off very much at all. And also keep in mind, the intent of this entire design is to be a close combat style of a design it's for self-defense purposes. So it's not a long range targeting system. We have the ported barrel, which does help to control uh, muzzle rise to an extent. There's a little viewport window right there that you can see if there's a chamber or a, a cartridge in the chamber rather. You can look in there and see if you see the little edge of a brass case uh, to tell you if there's a chamber in there or a, a shell in the chamber or not. That's pretty much it as far as the uh, controls. Uh, it does have an external extractor right there. So that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and take a look at disassembly. So the first thing you would do is lock the slide back and you can do that you would pull the slide back and lift up on that slide lock and that locks the slide back that is a required step in the disassembly because that also unlocks the takedown uh, screw there once that's locked back you take a tool of some type small screwdriver you could i guess use a edge of a, a cartridge if you were uh, in the field so to speak and you would turn that clockwise about three quarters of a turn to that position there. It is under spring tension until it's in the final position. So if you only get it part way and it slips off, it'll pop back. So you wanna you know, turn it all the way and then it will stay in position. Once it's in that position and staying there, you would then pull the slide back slightly to release it and it will slide off the frame. The frame itself, it is a polymer framed firearm. There is a steel chassis that includes the slide the, the slide rails on the frame for the slide to engage uh, and for the fire control system. This chassis actually is removable and uh, there may or may not be different uh, pistol bodies uh, that might come out for this. Uh, however, that's the, pretty much how it's designed. We have our striker right there that the trigger basically just call, makes that go up and down. This is the disconnector here. So when you pull the trigger, it would pull that sear down, which would release the striker to allow it to fire. When the slide goes back, it would push down on that and that would disconnect the trigger from the sear and it would pop back up to catch the striker as the slide comes back forward to cock it for the next shot. Now in its disassembled state, this takedown, I'll just call it a lever, even though it's not really a lever. When it's in this position, it disables the trigger from that sear assembly. So if you go to pull the trigger and it's like nothing's happening, well, that's why. So you could unlock that and then it would make everything work, but then you just have to put it back in place to reassemble the pistol. So there's not really any point to that. So uh, that's pretty much as far as you'd want to disassemble this. Uh, you just want to clean everything off, get it a light coating of oil for lubrication and corrosion prevention. That's pretty much it. Any further disassembly, uh, as even stated in, in the uh, manual, uh, needs to be done by someone uh, that's certified to do so. On the slide, there's our recoil spring. It's a dual spring assembly. It is a captive spring. And so you just need to push forward and lift up slightly to remove. So forward and up, and then that comes out. Have our barrel here. The barrel locks into the slide using the, sh the shoulders of that lug there that's on the barrel. We'll take a look at that here in a second. And in operation, as the slide goes back, this lug here engages on that takedown lever. And that's basically what causes it to unlock. So as the slide goes back, it would pull down on that and allow the slide to go back further unlocked from the barrel. So to remove the barrel, you would just need to go forward with it a little bit and you can lift it up and out. There, as I mentioned before, there's our extractor. This is our striker assembly right here. And this is a safety to prevent the striker from being able to go forward unless the trigger is pulled. When you pull the trigger, it also will lift up a lever on the frame which pushes down on that. And that allows the striker to go farther forward. Right now it's as far forward as it can go. And you can see right there where the firing pin should come out. When you push down on that safety, it allows the firing pin to come out all the way to fire the cartridge. There again, this is as far as you should disassemble this, unless uh, it really needs some service of some type. 
The rear cover plate can be removed and it's in typical fashion of most of these type of firearms has a cover plate. There's a little lock section right here. Let's see if you can visualize that right there. And you would just need to put something behind it, a little screwdriver or something, and push forward toward the front to take the tension off the lock on the rear cover plate, and then the rear cover plate can, can come off. So, uh, but there again, uh, for normal routine maintenance, uh, you, you shouldn't need to do that. So you'd basically want to clean everything off, clean all of the, the rails off, wipe everything down, clean the barrel, the outside and inside. I will tell you, uh, because of the porting on the barrel, that the, uh, the gases that blast out of this, and now there's holes in the slide, of course, for those gases to come out. However, during this whole operation, as we can see here, where those holes line up, as the slide recoils, for a little bit, those holes are not where there's a hole on the slide. And uh, basically, long story short, the inside of this gets absolutely filthy when you fire the firearm. So uh, it will take some cleaning to, to get everything clean. So just, just, just be forewarned of that. So reassembly, you'd put the barrel back in. Oh, said I was gonna mention it. The squared off shoulders here on the barrel is what lock into place just in the squared off recesses on the frame there or on the slide so once it's in place it's locked very rigidly and then once it comes down just a little bit then it allows it to unlock and slide back so you would go ahead and put the barrel in put your recoil spring back in the large end goes first into its recess on the front the section here, there's two holes in it, will go into this little pocket that's right there on that lug. And just in case you're wondering, well, what if I put it in backwards? Will it work? Well, I'd be surprised if you could actually get that in because it's designed to only collapse one way. So if you're trying to install it and this just won't go in, it's because you probably got it backwards. So, you basically push forward and then down, put it back in that pocket and hold it in place. Then you align the rails on the slide with the rails on the frame. And then go ahead and pull the slide all the way back, lift the locking the slide lock that will release the little lock that's on the takedown lever and it should snap back into its position with upright position to lock in place if it doesn't you may need to turn it a little bit that'd be just counterclockwise just return it to the same position it was do a function test and we're all reassembled now as far as the overall size of this firearm keep in mind this is a 10 round flush fit magazine. This is my Ruger LC9S. This is my carry arm I've been carrying. It's actually, the Ruger is bigger than the 365. The Ruger holds seven rounds in its magazine. The 365 holds 10. Even if you use the extended finger grip magazine and the pistol will come with this mag flush fit magazine and this extension one it's still smaller than the ruger they also make a 12 round magazine with that finger extension a little bit longer and it is still basically at this point the same size up and down, a little bit smaller still in length than the Ruger. The difference is this now holds 12, the Ruger holds seven. So that's the magic that they were able to do with the 365. So we're all reassembled. As soon as I could obtain one, I wanted to get out to shoot it. Unfortunately, the weather's taken a decidedly wintry downturn and it was cold and windy. 
Luckily, some friends of mine let me use their backyard range to take some quick shots so I could get some initial thoughts, and I want to give a shout out to Steve and Julia for letting me use it. As it was cold and windy, I did not spend a lot of time out there. This was my first use of the Reaperlite's bullseye system, and it does take some getting used to. But once I got the hang of them, I found that the accuracy was acceptable considering the weather conditions. As I obtained this pistol with the intent of making it my new daily carry weapon, I wanted to make sure that reliability would not be an issue and that I was more familiar with it. So a few days later I went to an indoor range and I had a more extended session. In the little over 400 rounds I fed it, I've had no functional issues at all. All shooting was done offhand, and I fired at varying distances. SIG's marketing officer, Tom Taylor, has stated that the SAS was designed for close combat shooting at ranges of 5 to 10 yards, so I fired at both of those ranges, and at those ranges I think the accuracy is fine. I went ahead and stretched it out to 17 yards, the max I could go at the range I was at, and the results were what I would expect from it. Keep in mind, this is roughly what the sight picture looks like at those distances. While I think that the accuracy at the design parameters is fine, I did find an issue with the setup. In situations where lighting is limited and varied, the bullseye system starts to struggle. While it does have tritium night sights uh, for illumination, that's only really effective in near total darkness. In a situation where lighting is subdued but the target is illuminated, think like flashlight use, the sights basically disappear, so you're left with a point shooting gun. In that exact same scenario, traditional sights would still provide a targeting solution. So what do I think of this pistol overall? Well, it is innovative. SIG figured out a way to remove potentially snag-prone sights while still providing, for the most part, a functional sighting system. However, it has limitations on its usefulness depending on lighting conditions. Also, it's limited to close range shooting. Longer ranges are problematic. But to be fair, that's what SIG has stated it was designed for. Function-wise, it seems to be a dependable pistol and has outstanding capacity for its size. But is it better than a 365 with regular sights? In all honesty, I'm not totally sold on that. While it may be more snag-proof, I've never really seen that as a major issue in my life and I carry every day. I think in reality it's more a marketing idea rather than a necessary one. It worked. 
I've been holding off and replacing my Ruger as my EDC until I saw this and I wanted to try it out. At the end of the day, I'll be keeping it as my day-to-day -day carry gun, but I would have been just as happy with a traditionally sighted 365. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. At Craig's Gun Channel, my goal is to remain objective and honest about all the opinions I express on the items I feature. I do not receive payment from any of the companies whose products I cover, and I would ask you to please consider supporting the channel via Patreon or by purchasing CGC gear from my website. Links are in the description, and I appreciate your viewership. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.